every once in a while, I will have a YouTube subscriber send me some information that he or she believes should get out to the masses. And here today, I have just that. I had a subscriber that sent me some information regarding the CFTC, a small clip that I'm going to show you here today on the chairman of the CFTC talking specifically about digital assets and really referring to two blockchain companies that we love to talk about on this on this channel and that is Stellar and Ripple. He doesn't come out and exactly say Stellar and Ripple, but I believe once you watch this clip, you will see that it holds true that this gentleman is extremely bullish on where the direction of digital assets are going and how they eventually will become commodities and be held under this regulation. Now, for those of you who have watched my video last night on Stellar I talked about how extremely excited I am to have one of our own from the Stellar family in the CFTC. It was just announced yesterday that we have one of our own in a subcommittee of the CFTC. And so we are working with regulators. Ripple has been working with regulators. So I'm going to show you this clip. It's Mr. Chair Rostin here and so incredibly clear how he feels about this market. Now, if you don't want to watch the entire clip, I'll go ahead and pass you along some notes at the very end of this video. I'm also going to link the video I put out last night in regards to what Stellar is doing with the CFTC. And I hope you really enjoy this. Let me know by clicking the like button, sharing the content. So individuals all over the world get this information out there. And please, if you like XLM and XRP content, drop an X in the comments section below. Um, to essentially swap cash for a stable coin or some other digital asset and instantly transfer that asset across the globe. And, and what I mean, when I say instant, I mean instant. So we can think about a lot of um, individuals and families who have relatives overseas or in different parts of the world where this technology can actually facilitate um, opportunities that currently don't exist. All that said, it comes with risks, right? Because risks of information about these assets, and volatility of these assets, um, and whether or not there's fraud occurring behind the institutions that are facilitating some of these tokens and some of these services. And that's where I think a disclosure regime is critical, customer education regime is critical, and ultimately, I think to your point, more examination by the agency in partnership with other agencies to see what are in fact the use cases. Are we seeing a development in this space that is helping and supporting financial inclusion? Or is it in fact just a mirage and are we not seeing it? And I think we don't we shouldn't dismiss it, but we also shouldn't embrace it as a, a success story quite yet. So we can do things at the agency level and certainly would like your support to do more work so we can uh, really figure out what's behind all this and, and make the best of it. Yeah, thank you. And maybe I could take a little bit of a deeper dive on this topic. And I, I appreciate in your testimony, you allude to this, we need to be doing more studying around this to really learn more of the facts, the hard facts around this and what the real results have been. Um, but could you explain a little bit more in detail about who these populations um, are and how any legislation in this space should address this dynamic to ensure that these populations are protected? Thanks, Congressman. Congresswoman. I, I would say that what we are seeing, and there are there are statistics. You pointed to some of them. There have been some studies, um, and it, it is low income communities. Um, it's uh, racially diverse communities that, you know, are living in traditionally underbanked areas. And as I said, find these tools that are being facilitated by technology much easier to have access to. So much of the discussion that we're having today is about barriers to access and really a reduction in access to financial markets and banking services because it really is just a phone as opposed to having to go to a bank which may or may not exist in your community and then to provide a credit score and information and an address and you know history financial history all of these requirements that we have in our traditional system can act as barriers for individuals who don't have credit history to have a banking account. This eliminates many, if not all, of those barriers. So again, there's an optimistic way to view this, but I think with high caution, because with all of these opportunities comes risks, and we have to focus on these vulnerable communities, which tend to be the ones 
using these banking services or these technologies for these types of services. And so tell me, do you think that based off what he just said, underbanked, undeveloped areas, he is not talking about your own stellar XLM Lumen. We have been pounding the table for a very long time now stating that stellar XLM Lumens is for peer-to-peer. -peer. XRP, Ripple, is for the international banks. These two cryptocurrencies, in my personal opinion, are going to pivot the world forward. They will do it in big ways in countries like Africa. I just talked about that the other day, about how they're utilizing blockchain tech companies as well as digital assets in large scale in those underdeveloped countries. And so when you hear the chairman of the CFTC talk about this, he has obviously done very extensive research and understands how this technology is going to help move us ahead in the new financial revolution. And so the stars, yes, they are beginning to align. Stellar is directly working with CFTC. We have one of our own in the subcommittee. We know that Ripple has worked with the Fed Reserve. And so you tell me, tell me in the comment section below, where do you believe these two cryptocurrencies are going over the long haul? We see what's happened with XLM here as of late, as we've gotten all this bullish news, they're still continuously trying to suppress XRP through this case, we are still staying pretty much flat, just down over six and a half percent, a little over six and a half percent on the last month. But things are heating up in a big way. We know Fed now is about to come out in the month of July, and I just can't wait. Again, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this content so others around the world can see what's happening in front of our faces. Thank you, and I'll see you all in the next video.